Bing's new AI chatbot is probably the most powerful chatbot available publicly, at least for now. I've been playing around with Bing chat and taking the time to learn how to use this quirky but really useful AI tool is gonna serve you well now and into the future as this whole space accelerates rapidly. I, for one, wanna keep up. So in this video, I'm sharing the tips and tricks I found to be most useful in getting the most out of Bing AI. So first up, you have to get access to Bing's new chat feature, and it is not automatic. So to get access, you're gonna wanna go over to bing.com. And if you haven't already get, gotten access, there should be a button here that says to sign up for the waitlist. You're gonna click that do what it tells you and wait for an email to come through granting you access. What you are gonna need to do is download the Edge browser if you're using your laptop or download the Bing app using mobile. Because as you can see, this button over here, you're gonna click that to open up the Bing chat. Getting access was taking a little while. I think it was one or two weeks before. I got in at the end of February. It took me about eight days but once you get in, you can open up Bing Chat and this is what it looks like. Very similar to ChatGPT in that you simply go down here into the chat box, type your question or your instructions and start chatting with Bing. There are a few limitations to keep in mind before we get started. Bing does have some more strict guardrails than ChatGPT does. So it is good to keep these things in mind when you're crafting prompts and using it to get what you want. So first off, there is a limit of eight prompts before Bing forgets what was said previously in the conversation. So as you know, with ChatGPT, ChatGPT remembers what you said beforehand in the conversation, and it can use that to build on what it's saying and what it is outputting. Um, but with Bing, that is a limit to eight prompts before you have to start over again. Now, beyond the hard limits to how much you can use it, there are of course some similar limitations as with ChatGPT in that Bing also does make up or hallucinate a lot of things. It does lie. For that reason, it is best to fact check anything that it says, but Bing does make that a lot easier than ChatGPT because it does provide its sources and you can click on them and look them up. Bing is not good at math, so if you are asking it to do calculations or solve things with numbers, just be prepared that it's probably going to lie and you're not gonna get accurate results. But the biggest frustration people are having with Bing so far is that it sometimes shuts down the conversation or refuses to continue the conversation if it doesn't like something for some weird reason. Or it'll even start writing an answer and then delete it and refuse to go forward. So it, it will do this sometimes if it thinks something is mean, if it thinks something is dishonest or unethical, and it doesn't always make sense when and why it does this. So be prepared for that. So here are the tips and tricks to getting the best interesting and useful results out of Bing AI. If you've used ChatGPT before, working with Bing is basically the same process except for one big difference and that Bing is connected to the internet so you can ask it to look things up before it gives you an answer. If you recall, ChatGPT is not connected to the internet so it only knows things that happened up until 2021. With Bing, we don't have that issue so it is much more powerful. So the first tip to get the best results out of Bing is to make sure you're choosing the right conversation style. And if I scroll down here, just above the chat box, you can see we have three choices. We have creative, balanced, or precise. And in most cases, you're gonna wanna choose more creative to get the best, most interesting results. Otherwise, it's gonna sound boring and robotic. With one exception is if you are using Bing to do stuff with numbers, to calculate stuff, you wanna try to go with more balanced and more precise it doesn't really give you anything very interesting, but you could play around with that if you want. But for the most part, we're gonna be going with more creative. Tip number two is to always, always, always ask Bing to search or look something up as part of your prompt, because this is the major strength of Bing over ChatGPT and that it is connected to the internet. So you wanna make use of that. Otherwise you might as well just use ChatGPT. And if I just type a question here to show you what this looks like, what is the current price of Bitcoin? You can see anytime you have this little check and it says searching for whatever, that means you have gotten it to perform a search. And it's going to reference what it finds in the answer it gives you. You can see it has its references. So if I want to double check that anything it says is correct, I can click on those links and make sure it is not lying to me. If you are not getting this little check mark and getting it to search for you, Bing outputs are generally comparable to what ChatGPT would give out. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I want it to write me a paragraph about going on a walk through a forest. 
So as you can see with this example, it didn't look anything up and it's simply going to write me a paragraph about walking through a forest. So if I read this paragraph, it's pretty general. It's, it's all right. It's nothing special, but let's try and get to look something up beforehand so we can improve this and get a better piece of writing. So instead, let's ask it to look up the writing style of Stephen King, then use what you've learned to improve the paragraph. Okay, so you can see Bing has searched for writing style of Stephen King. So, and then it gives me a little bit of analysis on what it found, the references, the resources it used, and tells me what Stephen King's writing style is like. And then it goes and rewrites the story about walking through a forest in Stephen King's style. And immediately you can see it has a more scary feel to walking through a forest. It focuses more on, I stepped into the forest and felt a chill run down my spine. The air was cold and stale like a tomb. So it's taking the style of Stephen King that it learned about in its search and applying that to the paragraph about the walk in the forest. And I just want to point out, I mentioned before that there's a limit of eight prompts before you have to reset and Bing forgets what was said beforehand. That has now been upped to 10. So you can see down here, this we're at prompt three of 10. So if you want to make sure that Bing is doing a search and including that in your prompt, this is the general prompt structure that I have found works for me. So your prompt structure looks like look up or research X and then use that to Y. Tip number three is to make use of Bing suggestions for what to ask next. And you can see here at the bottom that Bing is giving me some suggestions for what to say to continue the conversation. Now, these aren't necessarily that useful for this specific instance, but it often does come up with some good ways that you can keep conversing with it. And this is really helpful because talking to an AI is pretty foreign to most of us. It's not, it doesn't come naturally. So having Bing help you out by suggesting where to take the conversation next can help you get unstuck. So here it just says, I could say that's scary, write me another paragraph, or how do you feel about horror? Probably not directions that I want to take. Maybe I do want it to write me another paragraph in a different way, but I could click that and continue on the conversation. Bing will also sometimes end its output with another question asking to clarify, or if you want to dig deeper and expand on what it already gave you. And that could be really useful as well. And tip number four is to use Bing to gather and analyze data. And since it is connected to the internet, it is really, really good at this. So for example, you can get it to do a search, then pull all of that relevant information it finds and put together a chart for you. Say I was in the market to buy a new car. I want to get a small car that is new in 2023. So I could ask Bing to search for the best compact cars for 2023 look up the make, the price, the mileage, the safety rating, and anything else I might want to know in making my decision. So let's put that into a prompt. Okay. So Bing has searched for best small cars in 2023, and it has put together a chart with all of the things that I requested. So we have each car, the price, the mileage, and the safety ratings. Maybe I wanted to take this a step further. I'm still not sure which car I want to buy. So I can ask Bing to write a report on what it found, discuss each option and why the best one outperforms the others. All right, so it is writing its report right now. It's going to take a little while. It looks pretty long, um, but it is discussing each of the options for the cars that I have in that chart. And hopefully it's going to tell me why the winner is the winner. So it's telling me the best option is the Honda Civic and it gives me a list of reasons why it is the best option. So I could go out there and buy that car now if I wanted to without having to do all of the research on my own. And that ties us in nicely with tip number five, which is to use multiple prompts to get better results. And you can see in the example I just completed, I didn't ask for all of this at once. I first told Bing to look up best small cars in 2023 and create the chart. Then I asked it to write a report comparing them. By breaking this up into multiple prompts, you reduce your chances of confusing and overwhelming Bing and getting the problem where it refuses to answer you or it answers and deletes itself. And this is really useful for writing tasks. So instead of me going, write me a story about a dog who becomes friends with a bear, then it's going to write itself. And then maybe that doesn't come out the way I want. And I want to say, write me a scary story about a dog who becomes friends with a bear. And then maybe I don't like that either. And then I write again, and this is going to regenerate the whole story from scratch each time with slight variations, but instead, oh yeah, 
And as you can see, Bing was just writing me a huge story and it went and deleted it now and, uh, and is telling me to try a different topic. So this is the quirkiness of Bing that a lot of people struggle with. Um, but anyways, instead of trying different prompts and getting the whole story generated, I might want to generate a story and then co-edit along with Bing. I want to ask it one thing at a time and build upon what we've created. Doing that through multiple prompts is the best way to do that. Just keeping in mind that you have a maximum right now of 10 prompts before you have to reset what it remembers. And tip number six is to teach Bing new skills. We already taught it how to write like Stephen King by asking it to go research that first, but you could also do this for other skills as well. You can also teach Bing how to do things like generate mid journey prompts to create images. So an example prompt to teach Bing and get it to output a mid journey prompt that we could then take and then pop into mid journey to generate an image is this. So look up how to create image prompts using mid journey. Use what you learn to write a prompt that generates whatever image you would like. So let's try an example. So look up how to create image prompts using mid journey. Use what you learn to write a prompt that generates an image of a girl in a yellow dress sipping coffee by the Eiffel tower. So it's going to search how to create image prompts using mid journey and we'll see what it does. All right, it was having a little bit of trouble the first time I tried, so I reset my chat and asked it the same prompt again. So if you want to reset your chat, you can click the broom button here and it'll restart a new topic. Again, we're here back to one out of 10 prompts. So I've asked it again, look up how to create good image prompts for mid journey, use what you learned to create a prompt that outputs a pink cat in space. And based on that prompt, it generated this image prompt. So let me take that and pop that into mid journey and see what it generates. So if I took the prompt that Bing generated for me for a pink cat in space, pop that into mid journey, this is the image it gets. So you can teach Bing to create images for you now, which is pretty cool in my opinion. If you've taught Bing new skills, I'd love to know what they are. I am just at the beginning of playing with it and figuring out what I can do. Um, so if you have any genius things that you've used Bing for, do drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Keeping these prompting tips in mind when you're using Bing chat is going to help you get better results than the vast majority of people. So I've put together a useful little cheat sheet with all of the best prompt templates and examples so you can craft better prompts, whether you're using Bing or ChatGPT. I've packaged that all into a PDF that you can download and refer to whenever you're using any of these AI tools and you can grab that for free at the link below. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share it with a friend that would really, really help me out. Otherwise, if you're ready to learn more about how you can thrive in the digital revolution, then check out one of these videos next and I will see you guys next time.